Hi, I'm Marty Duda here at uh, Laneway with Mish Barber Way from White Lung. Hello. Mish, since the last time you were here, which was a couple of years ago, you changed your name. Mm -hmm. So explain for folks who may not be up on it why that has happened. Well, I got married. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Yes, I got married and um, my husband's last name is Barber and it, it was actually really important to him that I have his name in there for when we have children and his father he's the only son of his father and his father passed away when he was probably 20 right and way barber sounded dumb right so now my full name is mishka rihanna debil barber way nice it's one. kind of ridiculous <laughs> yeah. i love it <laughs> it's, it's like a queen name so the last time uh, white lung was in auckland you guys played the king's arms in 2014 and it was a great show yeah. full on um, so, other than the fact that you're now married, what else has kind of changed with the band since then? Well, we made a new album yes. called Paradise. Um, <laughs> we have a new bass player. Uh, we, we write the albums, just the three uh, original members, Kenneth and Marie and myself, and then we have bass players come in and do tour cycles. We had Heather um, last time we were here, and then right. we had Lindsay Troy from Deep Valley. And now we have our friend Carolyn Doyle, who's a really old friend of ours. We've all known her for like 10 years. I wanted her to play in the band before, but she couldn't. Um, and she has this band called Vapid back home with uh, her sister that's really cool. So we're happy that she's been with us this whole year. But yeah, I mean, our sound's different now. Kenny's doing some really cool stuff. It's exciting. Yeah. I do remember the, uh, the King's Arms show. Heather had the quote of the night. She what did announced she say? That she, she said she was not feeling well. She was sick. And does any, could anybody bring her some whiskey? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that show was kind of near the end. Um, and it was great. I remember I really loved that show. Yeah. New Zealand's good. Yeah. So you mentioned that the, the sound has kind of changed. Yeah. How so? How would you? Yeah. Well, on Paradise, we, uh, we decided to work with a new producer. We made the record in LA instead of in Canada. And that was partially because I was, um, when you get married, I had a work visa and that had to switch to a green card and you get put in this um, purgatory where you can't leave the country. So right. we didn't know if I would be able to leave or not. We didn't want to book time. I mean, it's in even Canada. Now. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see. Well, I'm, I'm good now. But, um, <laughs> but uh, so we decided to work with a new producer, Lars Stalford, and he just, he really had a heavy hand in the record. Him and Kenny got along very well right from the beginning, and they knew exactly the kind of approach they wanted to take. And with me, he wanted to make the vocals like they often can be an afterthought in punk or rock records, and he sure. really wanted to make that the shining star. Um, and he did a very How did you feel about that? Did, was there a lot of discussion about it? Yeah, it? no, I was happy to do it because I, I, you know, throw me a new challenge. And he taught me so many great techniques and really pushed me. I mean, I grew up a competitive figure skater and a dancer. I like a coach. I like a disciplinary there right. telling me, try it again, do this better, do this better. And so came in, we did the record in a, in a month and a bit in L.A. And I just... I remember doing two weeks and 10 hours a day of vocals, you know, right. wrote everything there. So it was um, a completely different process, a lot of collaging, mixing things around. We wanted to use technology in the best way we could to, to, to make the best songs. It wasn't recording 10 songs, going in and playing them. We wrote and, and developed them in the studio. Right. And do you use a vocal coach at all? I did for long, for in 2012, because I lost my voice. Yes, yeah, I was going to say, there's only so much, you can only go so long screaming your lungs out it's, until something happens. Yeah, so I went to out. actually a speech therapist um, because I had uh, nodes again, so she helped me. Instead of having surgery again, I've already had this surgery to remove them Right. when I was younger, so, and if you keep doing that, you're stripping away the strength. So we decided to try doing speech therapy again, and it did help. Um, I worked really hard, and now I have warm-ups that I do, and, and I'm much more conscious. But, I mean, some days are still rough. Like, after the first show on a tour, my voice will be just absolutely trash. But then by day three, it's right in that stride, you know? Right. Like, it's a muscle. It's a weird thing. you got to yeah. learn. You learn the tricks of it and how it's going to work, and sometimes it's just works against you. Yeah, and it's funny because you think about punk rock, we, you don't need to worry about all that, but actually you probably need to worry about it more because of the way you use your voice. <coughs> Excuse me, it's completely true. Like when we were touring with Refused, 
<coughs> Excuse me. That's all right. I couldn't believe that Dennis never did vocal work. Right. Like he would stretch his legs because I guess he dances a lot. But I was like, how can you not do them? He's like, I've never done them. Right. Some people are lucky. I'm not lucky. My voice is a challenging instrument, so I have to do that, or else I can't sing. Yeah. Now the other thing that I understand, <coughs> really my reading about the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead, is uh, that your songwriting has kind of taken a change intact as well. Yeah. With the, with the change in the sound. Yeah, that was that's this guy over here uh, that's off uh, camera. Kenny's uh, <laughs> he's running Kenny, away. he's running away now. He's just walking away. He doesn't care. Um, that was a lot of Kenny because I know that he really wanted to. I mean, there's only so much you can do on a guitar, so now he has this big mini board where he programs in other guitar parts. So he's essentially playing, and we're too cheap to get another guitarist, and also he knows what he's doing. So he programs his other guitar parts into his feet. So he's actually playing two instruments, one with his feet and one with his hands. Right. Um, and I don't know, we just, we wanted to, we wanted to make a record that sounded, that could not, wasn't a throwback record, you know? There's so much like, oh, let's, tape it like this, or let's throw it back to the 70s, whatever. No, yeah, yeah. we want to make a rock record that sounds like it was made in 2016, and it cannot be confused for that time. So that was the goal. And bright production. There's a lot going on in our band, so if you don't have a really clean, bright production, you're going to miss a lot of the little details, mm -hmm. especially with Kenny's playing. So that was a big thing. And two, we wrote completely separately. So I wasn't sitting there listening to his guitar parts, getting them wound up in my head. I was basically getting songs handed to me that were done without everything, like drums, bass, and the main guitar part was done, and then I could write on top of that. So my vocals aren't going with the guitar, right? because um, that can be a distracting thing. So the separation was really good. And uh, the topics that you chose to talk about were uh -huh. less personal, from what I understand, mm -hmm. and kind of more inspired by other uh, things. Yeah, yeah, and I, I mean, I've always, taken from books and things I was in, you know, news stories, things I was just Are you bad. an avid reader? I'm an avid reader and I, I write. I, I yeah. write for, for yeah. another part of my living. So, you know, I'm always involved with words. Um, and lyrics are really important to me. I really, you know, for some songwriters, the melody is what's more important, and, mm -hmm. and for me, the lyrics are really important. Just because when I listened to music when I was a kid, I like couldn't wait to get my hands on the lyrics. I wanted to know exactly what they said. I studied that. Like it's just, it's a poetry is, can be cheesy if it's done bad, but a song, you know, <laughs> it's a similar thing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I just, uh, I just, I don't know why I, I really started singing from other people's perspectives. I think that it was just. There was a freedom in that. There was something fun in fiction, and it just, you know, I was drinking my fireball in the studio. Things happen. <laughs> Things like, happen. Yes, they yeah, do. that was my medicine every time. I always drink fireball when we record. It's totally gross. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, I just, I just got attached to certain stories, and that stuff was running in my head, and I wanted to explore it lyrically. Cool. Now, um, stuff is happening in your part of the world. In my country. In your country, and uh, I, like for instance, there was the women's march. Yeah. Uh, is that something that, that you kind of feel you need to take part in? Do you identify with it? Yeah. Do you keep yourself separate from it? I how, how feel, you... well, in the last couple years, I feel as though I've been less vocal about things, and mostly just because it's more like I feel, it's very overwhelming for me to see, for the social media to keep up with all that. It's a lot, but right now, I mean, things are wild, and, <laughs> and I feel being, we've been in Australia and New Zealand now for, 10 days or whatever and so much has happened back home I was speaking to my friend Julie from Deep Valley the other day right and she she and I were talking about it and there was stuff I wasn't even aware of because I haven't you know I have my political shows I listened to I hadn't caught up and I was like oh my you know it's it's a crazy time right now and I'm always trying to be very optimistic yeah yeah you know like when I but and do you feel any kind of responsibility to make some kind of statement, or no, do you I think don't. That people are going to look to you. And I don't feel, I don't feel that way right now, um, and and mainly because 
I think there's a lot of other people that are very passionately making statements, and I just feel a little overwhelmed about discussing that. I don't think that it... Uh, I'm not singing political songs. Um, and I just... I don't know. I mean, and then I also feel like there's a pressure to do so as well. And sure. it's like, okay, well, maybe I don't want to talk about that, you know, right now. Yeah. Um, so there, there is a pressure, though. Yeah, yeah. And I think... Uh, I've it's missed so much of it. I, I'm, let's face it, it's only been a week since Trump well, has taken. <laughs> and I mean, he's moving fast. That's a fact. Like, let's let's be realistic here. But it is, I do find the reaction to it on social media very overwhelming. And I'd, I'd prefer just to step back and, and read right. from some sources that I trust, a variety of sources, listen to a variety of uh, political commentators, and just see what happens. I mean... Cool. Full fucking C. <laughs> well, in the meantime, you're down here, which is mm -hmm. kind of nice. And, and so you've done some laneway shows already. Yeah. How have they gone? They've been great. I feel like we're too loud uh, for laneway. <laughs> I don't think that's possible. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like we're too loud for laneway. Um, they've been great. It's been, it's been, it's so hot. Yeah. Um, but they've all been lovely shows, and we're really happy to be doing this festival. It's a nice, you know, it's always nice to get carted around and, yeah, yeah. and do a lovely little festival. It's, it's great. Excellent. Anybody yeah. on the on the lineup that you kind of well, I didn't. To? To be, I'm kind of a bonehead, and I wasn't really aware of a lot of the bands. Um, I was like, oh no, no, no. but I did watch Neo play the uh, in Singapore, and she was amazing. Right. Um, I think that's part of what Laneway would, is all about. Yeah, you discover things. I remember things. When, the, when the lineup was announced and people were coming to me going, I don't know any of these bands. But now, yeah. you know, months later, you're like, yeah, I'd need to see them, them, yeah, and them, yeah, and them. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Festival's like this little sample platter. You can just yeah. walk around and, oh, okay, I'll check that out. Um, and yeah, I really loved her set. So um, I'd like to see her again play. She, she has like really strong voice, very yeah. cool. Cool. All right, and Good hopefully hair. you can come down here and uh, do a set on, show on your own at some yeah, point soon. Yeah, come back for a club circuit. I mean, we've been doing a few club shows in between. We did one in Melbourne, and then there's two more, but not in Auckland, with, or Auckland, excuse me, which sucks because I would have liked to have yeah, done yeah, that. Yeah. No time. Yeah, 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 in and out. Okay, well, thank you for taking the time to talk to me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Very good. Yeah. Rock on. Thank you. <laughs>